This is looking at how to do AQA Language Paper 2, Section 8, Question 4. And that's the question that deals with writers' ideas and perspectives. It's worth 16 marks, so it's the largest question on that Section A section. And you'll remember that this is dealing with um, non-fiction texts. So this is the one where you get um, two extracts to deal with that you haven't seen before. One of them's going to be um, 19th century, one of them's going to be more modern. But um, the questions are always going to follow the same pattern. So you know that question four is always going to deal with, with these ideas, the writer's ideas and perspectives. So what does actually that mean you're looking at? Well, for this question, they're always going to remind you that you need to look at the whole of both sources. So it may be that um, your teacher's given you some specific guidance on which order to do the questions in. Now, obviously, you can do them one, two, three, four. Um, I would suggest you play around with the idea of maybe doing them in the order one, three, two, four. Just make sure you remember to go back and do question two. But that's just because questions one and three deal with one text. Question two and four deal with um, both texts. Now, questions two and four won't generally overlap each other. You remember that that um, question two deals with summary and inference and it'll normally be on quite a discrete, quite a distinct bit of the, the text. You know, both riders, uh, both riders, both writers deal with ideas about blah, um, summarise their ideas or summarise what you understand or summarise the differences or so. Um, this is looking um, at writers, perspectives and ideas. And so your starting point is really to look at the tone of the article, what it's talking about and how the author of that article um, feels about it. Are you picking up generally a positive or a negative kind of vibe from this article? Um, because your question is going to follow this pattern. So compare how the writers convey their different perspectives on than the idea that's in the articles. So it could be these events, these cities, um, this particular hobby sport idea that the papers have been really varied. But you know the writers obviously are two different people and so they're going to have different ideas on this. And the bullet points will remind you to compare the perspectives, so the ideas themselves, and then these two are quite useful to bear in mind because they specifically remind you to compare the methods the writers use to convey their perspectives. So actually that is going to be key, okay, that idea of methods. Um, they also remind you to support your response with references to both texts and that's either by quotation or by direct reference. Because some of these methods you can quote really precisely and um, that's fine you know, if you're picking out metaphor, simile, um, alliteration, hyperbole, statistics, all that kind of stuff. But some of it is going to be more difficult to quote and therefore your reader needs to know um, exactly the part of the text you're looking at. So if you're saying you know, the repeated use of lists, for example, you're not gonna quote all the lists but your your reader needs to know that, you know, you found a specific detail from the text that you're going to hang that point on. So you're going to support your references to both texts. And that's just reminding you, you need that balance as well in there. You can't just really look at source A and ignore B or vice versa. Also put a little reminder from the mark scheme there. That's the top band that you're looking to compare ideas and perspectives in a perceptive way. So you're not just stating the obvious, you're actually working out, unpicking um, how the writer has said something and, and therefore how you think they feel about it. Analyzes how the writer's methods are used. So again, that idea of methods is really important. What deliberate conscious choices are those writers making to show their approval, their disapproval, their um, support for their condemnation of, etc. A range of judicious supporting detail from both texts. So you need a range of points. Judicious is well judged. OK, so you need to actually come up with this range of points and have a good selection of really well chosen 
um, examples that are, that are um, evidencing that. And again, the both texts, you're going to balance it. And a detailed understanding of the different ideas and perspectives in both texts. So actually going into the a little bit more of the minutiae in it, rather than just kind of stating the obvious and then and then moving away. And that's a lot of the time going to be dealing with the bigger ideas, bigger concepts. So a few tips in terms of how to approach this, and again, remembering that we've got our mark scheme there, always for what we're aiming at. You can comment on any um, of the approaches that you've encountered on the English language paper as a whole on this question, as long as you're relating it to the writer's views. So if you find something that you think is there about tone or about structure or about different literary techniques, like simile, metaphor, alliteration, personification, etc., etc., it's all fair game. OK, so um, really look out um, what's being done, but you must keep in mind you're going to use it um, to talk about the writer's views and your starting point is always what the writer thinks and therefore what they maybe are trying to influence you to think. Really try and name the methods. OK, so if you're if you're talking about a simile, you can answer, you know, use a simile, talk about tone, talk about that, that subject terminology. You might want to consider to start off with um, an overview in terms of the, the writer's views as your opening comment. You know, have you got a clear contrast in views? Have you got somebody who approves of this, somebody who disapproves of this, somebody who thinks that the particular event is a tragedy, whereas somebody else thinks that another particular event um, is, is, was avoidable um, and therefore is looking to blame somebody? You might want to look at genre audience purpose in terms of a follow-up comment, just what is being written, why is it being written, and who is it being written for? Because that might allow you to make a, a, an overview comment about the writer's opinion or the writer's view. I would look at interweaving your comparisons. Um, use one article as your lead and then look for matching points. So the article that you think you've got the most to say about, um, really kind of look at the annotation on that and then kind of stitch in in a, in a plan and do plan this question um, points that are kind of similar or different so you can get that kind of contrastingly or in a similar way or you know whereas one writer does this the other writer sorry whereas one writer shows their feelings about this the other writer shows their feelings about this through etc try and um Bear in mind that you can match and compare on differences and similarities for a comparison question. Um, and make sure you link up either view or method. Don't be completely random. It doesn't make any sense to say, you know, this writer shows their disapproval by using a metaphor. Um, similarly, this writer shows excitement by um, using alliteration. So try and try and kind of match on either um, view or method, just to kind of give it a bit more coherence, just to make it hang together a little bit more. And one way of bearing in mind how to do this, um, how to make sure you're answering the question and getting the focus right, is to make sure that you're um, concentrating your answers on writers' attitudes, ideas and perspectives. So in this little table, you can see some suggested sentence starters, which would be in um, a, a straight language analysis question, whereas actually, if you flip those for this second column here, that's more writers' perspectives. So you're actually kind of making sure that you're leading all the time with the writers' um, uh, approach to things, and then you're adding in your your methods. Condemnation is when you condemn something where you don't approve of it. Um, you're you're kind of slamming it um, and again if you're talking about things like emotive language writer shows his feelings through so just take a little bit of time to appreciate the difference between the language analysis sentence starters focus and then this writer's um, perspective sentence starters focus all the time you're going through on these ideas 
So here's looking at a bit of a worked example in terms of my annotation from um, a source about the greatest showman. So this is looking, first of all, at a um, an example taken from the Guardian newspaper talking about the historical context of the film. And you can see the green annotation is generally my first pass through looking for methods and looking for ideas um, in terms of what this writer has thought. And so I'm trying to kind of make sure I'm picking out the methods, maybe, but then actually kind of what's what's showing there, what the kind of, um, uh, I suppose, the um, writer's feeling, so tone of confidence um, aligning with a controversial figure shows. Um, you're really trying to make it clear what this writer thinks about um, the material they're looking at. So this question would be something like um, compare how both how the writers can pay their different perspectives on Barnum and um, his activities. So you can have a look through that and see what you can find in those annotations and feel free to add your own. Um, you know, there is there is more kind of to be said in terms of um, the writer's attitudes there. I think what they're what they're showing Then this next one is the complementary source. It's the older source. And this is actually Barnum himself writing. So it's taken from P.T. Barnum's autobiography. Um, and you're trying to see what of these, um, again, what these methods say about um, what this writer thinks about what he's he's doing and the way he's acting. So you're looking at, you know, things like the writer is proud, the writer's in control, the writer is in command. Um, the, the idea that he feels um, excited about what he's doing, that he is cynical about um, the audience's responses, etc. Look at all of these ideas of how he is presenting his ideas about what's going on. And again, linking to methods wherever you can. OK, so when you put the two side by side, you're then trying to kind of um, match up points to do that comparison. So starting with a good topic sentence in each um, start of paragraph. So you might start with, you know, whereas writer A shows his um, uh, condemnation of Barnum's approach to um, his circus by using the words, the connotations of writer B Barnum himself shows his um, pride in what he's doing by using the phrase. You know, so you're really trying to match it through each time and doing that um, probably on about five or six different points, building out those points in as much detail as you can. So you're really trying to kind of keep looking at um, a range of methods there and, and building and building on the different ideas. Hopefully this helps. If you've got any questions, just ask, but do have a go at using those examples and do add to them in terms of how you're going to explain how the writers convey their different perspectives on, on Barnum's activities.